Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with comedian Ron Sparks. What inspired you to become a comic? I'm a pretty funny person, Katie. And everyone always told me you should be a comedian. And I didn't want to do it, but I do what people tell me to do. Okay. So when you first decided that you were going to pursue comedy and be a comedian, what, where, what's the starting point? Like, what did you do? I think I'll ask the questions here, Katie. What inspired you to be an interviewer? Um, uh, I was approached by this network out of Boston, <laughs> and Boston, then in Toronto. That doesn't your story doesn't add up, Katie. <laughs> and then I recently opened Katie Chat. Now your turn. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't start in Boston. Um, how did I start? I don't even remember the question. How did you, once you decided you wanted to be a comedian, what did you then do? Are you sure we have enough microphones here? Yes. There's only three that I can see and four cameras. <laughs> There's more cameras than room here. We like to get a lot of coverage. I know. And the camera lady's eating cookies. Are they good? She's giving two thumbs up for those of you who can't see. So anyway, what was it? Why did I become a comedian? What did you do when you decided you wanted to be a comedian? I started to do comedy. <laughs> that's not very interesting, is it? No, that's fine. <laughs> did, uh, let's see, I did improv in high school and I loved it, so I got into improv at college. And then from that, it kind of naturally progressed into sketch. And then from sketch, I worked the door at the Alt Dot, the Rivoli. And then they made me try stand-up. So I mostly just do stand-up now. And what is the most challenging part of stand-up? Oh, uh, as an independent comic, it would be getting enough club dates. It's, it's hard, you know. I'm a pretty good comic, but I'm still, it's hard to get enough uh, headlining sets. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't travel too much, so. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of awful corporate gigs. They're the worst. And what's the most rewarding aspect? Oh, the rolling in the money, Katie. <laughs> I'm so wealthy. As you can see, I have an NFL sponsorship, <laughs> which I already discussed with your producer. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Lindsay. What? Lindsay. Lindsay? He's a boy, though. You, go, you probably get teased about that. Not once. Not once? Well, then I'm the first. I'm a professional, though, Lindsay. Let's see. Nope, that's all jokes I have for him. <laughs> I was going to say there's a famous general named Lindsay, but it's Leslie. <laughs> it's general Leslie Groves, I think, hmm. part of the Manhattan Project. So I'm not teasing you. And you've also won six comedy, Canadian Comedy Awards. What was that experience like? It was very fun. I enjoyed collecting awards and giving speeches. Awesome. Yeah. And you've also written on a number of shows as well. What's your preference? Do you like doing stand-up, or do you prefer to write? I don't know. That's a good question. Stand-up's a lot of fun. Um, but as far as a job that I get paid for, I think I like writing. Mm -hmm. It's fun, too. And then I can write for things that, uh, and I don't have to actually say the dialogue. So it, it can be crappy, and I don't get blamed, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> And what advice would you give to an aspiring comedian? Someone brand new, just get a lot of stage time. Mm -hmm. There's tons, if you're in Toronto, there's tons of open mics. I do open mics all the time, so you can get lots of experience that way. Make friends in comedy. Uh, find out somebody's name and make fun of it. You know, it's pretty easy. And where's the best place to find out more information on you and on your work online? Didn't we just go over this, Katie? This is very unprofessional. I'll point out, if you see a cut here, it's because the camera lady ran out of memory on her card, so we have to redo it. Lindsay, right? You'll back me up. That's not the camera lady. What? No, That's not the camera no he's lady. backing me up that it's your fault. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were eating too many cookies. Yeah, I was. <laughs> and you blew it. You blew it. I did. Oh. Where can they find me? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have a web page that is grossly out of date that I have not been to in probably three years. And uh, Twitter is what I use mostly. So Twitter, Ron Sparks Jr., all one word, Ron Sparks Jr. And hilarious tweets, up to 140 characters long. Great. <laughs> thank you so much, Ron. Congratulations on all of your success, and best of luck in the future. Well, thank you on your success in Boston and here. Thank is you. that the whole interview? Yes. Now let's keep going. Okay. I don't have anywhere else to go.
What do we talk about? Um, Who else did you interview so far? Um, we had a bunch of people in today. We had Michael Mahonen from. Michael Mahonen. Let's talk about him. What's up with this guy, Michael Mahonen? <laughs> he's really nice. He, yeah. yeah. He's no, he's really nice, and he was on Road to Avonlea, and directed know. Sandstorm yeah. as well. Road to Avonlea was the CBC did a historical drama. That was that one. Oh, it was wow. one of the 90 that they did. Mm. Very expensive shows. I don't know why they did those. Mm. That's very How good. How long did that show last? Um, I don't know. S seven, eight, nine years? Nine, nine years that show lasted? It lasted a long Let's time. Let's get Mahonen back in here and ask him how long. How long is this road that it took nine years to explore the whole thing? What was the show about anyway? Um, it's about the East... East Coast, and it's a village called Avonlea. It off of Anne of Green Gables or something? It was, yeah. right? Yeah. Anne of Green Gables is also based in Avonlea. Okay. Nine years of that show. That's an expensive show I for think nine. So. I'm just guessing. I'm not sure exactly. So it could have been three? No. It was definitely more than five. M more than five, possibly up to nine. <laughs> well, I'll <laughs> check it out. But uh, is Mahonen out there, Lindsay? No? Well, then we can't ask him. We'll never know how long. If only there was some kind of uh, interconnected network of computers where we could look up this information, we would know. Who else came in? Uh, we had Leanna Kay. I've worked with Leanna Kay. She is Ed Sock's uh, partner. Mm -hmm. Wife. Real life, Real life wife. I don't know, sometimes they don't like that said uh, when they're doing their characters. But OK, if she was in here and said she was the wife, she was the wife. Uh, was he in too? Nope, just Leanna. Yeah, it'd be hard to interview the sock. Mm -hmm. This room's not big enough. There's <laughs> nowhere for him to hide. So what'd they talk about, the new show? Yeah, I Hate Hollywood. Yeah, I don't work on that one. I worked on the last one. Mm. Well, thanks again. And, uh, oh. Done, oh. <laughs> Who else have you interviewed? Um, we interviewed Annie Bradley. She's a, a director. Is. Um, we interviewed, who else did we interview? Well, we just, we, in, oh, she's a, a director and a writer and she has her own production company. Um, and she, she didn't work on Anna Green Gables too, did she? I don't think so. Good. You don't want to just interview those people. You don't want to be typecast as that interviewer. Um, what movies did she do or TV shows? She recently, well, the most recent thing she did was she was part of the Pitch This competition at TIFF with her writing group, oh. which is called the WBI, which Nikki Payne is in, who you may know because she's a comedian. Oh, I know Nikki. Did Nikki come in? You should bring Nikki in. No, but I have interviewed her in the past. Really? Mm -hmm. Then you know how great she is. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this person writes with Nikki, she's okay in my books. Yeah. I hope they win the contest. It's a contest? Well, yeah, and I don't think they didn't get it, but it, they're in development on the project still. Okay. Well, I hope they get it. If you're watching this, Nikki, you know, her dog's name is Emilio Estevez. Really? It's true. I'm not making that up. It's true. And I listed him on IMDb for a short movie we did. So you can look up her dog on the internet. All right. Yeah. We're still not done, so don't even <laughs> think about saying goodbye. Who else came in? That was it. Those are all the people we saw. That's everyone? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Well, then, how was your day? <laughs> Good. Yeah? yeah. Mine was, I was pretty busy. I had all you can eat sushi for lunch. That's one reason I don't want the interview to end because I don't want to move yet. <laughs> the rice is expanding in my stomach as we speak. It's terrible. My friend's in town from Winnipeg. <laughs> Who? Jane. She's from a sketch strip called Hot Thespian Action. Oh. But enough about me. <laughs> what was your day like? Have you just been interviewing all day? Mm -hmm. What about you two? Were those cookies good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they must have been. I know she didn't offer me any. We, well, we I'm saved. kidding. She offered. She offered cookies. We saved no, one. you can have. Like I said, all you can eat sushi. I, it would be like that scene in that Monty Python movie. What was it? Meaning of life. You're offering me a mint on top of my sushi meal, and you better bring a bucket. Cool. Well. That is not cool at all. I'll vomit all over this room. Is what I'm saying. It's terrible. Annie, Annie 
And he brought, see, look, she's a friend of Nikki, and she brought cookies, and I brought nothing. I feel like a piece of garbage. Thank you, Annie. You were telling me three people brought gifts? Yeah. And that whole list of We people? got a book, a shirt, and cookies. A book, a shirt? Yeah, a t-shirt. A t-shirt? Okay, you can't really split that up among three people, but it's still a thoughtful present. Cookies, that's three of the four other interviewed people brought gifts and I brought nothing. You really dropped the ball. I'm just horrible. Who, who else brought nothing? Nobody. Nobody. No, there were more than three other people. Well, Wait a minute. You're, there were more people. Bobby Del Rio was on that list. Oh, yeah, he didn't bring anything. See? Me and Bobby Del Rio, we're garbage, and everyone else is great. I feel awful. I don't deserve three microphones. Well, I, I don't know why you keep this interview going this way. Hey, I have nothing to talk about, Katie. I'm afraid that you'll get mad if I end it. <laughs> well, I'm a very angry person. People always say that about me. I, I'm okay. over the top. Well, thanks again. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto. Downtown Toronto. Thanks a lot. No. Can you put the bike down? I have to give you a chance. <laughs>